Welcome back. We're going to be talking about functions and objects in R. We're looking at R Studio right here. Now, think of your data as an object, right? And that data might have different attributes. It might have different structures, and we're going to talk about that. And functions are the instructions that we're giving R to apply to those objects. It's relatively straightforward, and at the end of this lesson, you're going to feel really comfortable with these ideas. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Now, to make life easy, if we want to work with objects, we want to assign them to something, some sort of word that we can use so that we can apply functions to those objects. It's pretty straightforward. We can see we've already got an object here in our environment, and it's called cars. And if we were to click on that object, we would see it would that, in this case, it's a data frame, and we can see that data frame pops up here on the left hand up, upper left-hand quadrant. But we can also create objects, right? So we can create an object. For example, we want, might want to call it my age. And then if we use a little arrow symbol to indicate that we're assigning something to that, that particular uh, set of characters, and we're going to pretend that my age is 12, and if we push Command Enter or Control Enter on a PC, we can see that that's become a little object here in our global environment. Now let's take a look at how it is that we apply op functions to our objects. Let's, let's make a new little object called your age. And we're going to say that your age is 14. Uh, and that pops into our environment over there. Now, how do we apply a function to these objects? The, the function sum, which is to add up, is the function, right? And then we put brackets. And we put the arguments of the function inside the brackets. And the first argument for any function is usually what objects that function should be applied to. And we're going to talk about other arguments in just a minute. But let's have a look if we said we want the sum of my age and your age. Uh, command Enter. And you can see down here in the console, we can see it's added those up. Now, the most common object that we work with is a data frame, right? So there are all sorts of types and structures, but we're just going to deal with the common stuff now. And we'll get more into the sort of more detailed uh, variations on that as these lessons unfold. But let's have a look at cars right here. So if we click on cars, it's an object in our environment. That data frame pops up and we can see it here. And a nice neat and tidy, tidy data frame has got the variables as columns. So we've got speed and distance. And each observation is a new row, right? So this is a typical format for a data frame. And we're going to look at how it is that we can apply functions to an object like this. So we might want to apply the function plot Okay, and plot is a nice function because it R chooses the best kind of diagram that it can for any particular kind of data with plot. And we want to apply the function plot to the data frame cars. Okay, and we push command enter. And we can see down at the bottom on the right, it's created a plot of speed versus distance right there. And we can zoom in and have a better look at that if we want to. And of course, if we wanted to, we could export that as a PDF or an image. Now, we might want to apply a function to a part of the data frame, so not the entire data frame, but we might, we might want to take one of the variables there within, for example, speed, and we might want to apply a function to that. So if we've got a data frame, we've got multiple variables, we can, let's say, for example, the function we want to use is histogram, or hist for short, open brackets. The data frame we want to use is cars, right? And within that, the variable we want to look at is speed. And if we push Command Enter, we get a histogram of just the speed on the bottom, on the uh, at the bottom on the right over there. Here's a neat little trick: if you use the function attach and you apply it to the object cars, Command Enter, cars becomes attached, and so you don't need to use that little dollar sign to indicate which variable you want to use anymore. You can just type in the variable. So now, if we did hist, for example, and distance, dist for distance, it would create a histogram of the distance without us needing to put cars dollar sign dist. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of different functions. And of course, as you install packages into R, you get even more. What I'm going to do quickly now is show you a couple of the functions that you can apply to objects that will help you understand those objects a little better, what the parameters and attributes of those objects are. So this is a great way to just sort of understand the nuts and bolts of the objects that you're working with and practice working with functions. First of all, you can do a summary of a particular data frame. If you push Command Enter, we get 
both variables speed and distance and it gives us basically in this case they're both numeric variables and so we get the minimum the maximum the interquartile range the median and 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 the, and, the, and the mean for both of those variables and of course we can ask for a summary of just one of the variables right cars and i'm going to do the dollar sign and speed but of course because cars is attached you don't need to do that you could have just put in speed there command enter and here we get a summary of just that particular variable other functions that are going to help you understand the attributes and the parameters of your data are class, for example, and we can put, put in class cars, and that's going to tell us that cars is a data frame. Uh, class uh, cars dollar speed, and that's going to tell us that speed is a numeric variable. We can ask for the length of, in the data frame cars, the variable speed and it's going to tell us that that has got 50 rows or 50 observations. We can also ask for how many unique values there are, right? So things that like, this is more useful if you're dealing with, for example, a categorical variable, but let's do it anyway. Unique um, speed, and it's going to say these are all the unique values that exist in that, in that particular variable. Now you might want to get a sense of your data by looking at the first few rows or the last few rows of data. So we can do head, right? That'll give us the first few. It'll give us the first six in, in, in actual fact. Cars, and there we have the first six, six rows of data. And if we do the same, tail, cars, it'll give us the last six rows of data. If you wanted R to extract out just a particular subset of your data, you can type in your object cars and then use square brackets to tell it which subset you'd like. Now, in the square bracket, we're going to put a comma and I'm going to I'm going to just do this one step at a time. Before the comma, you tell it what rows you want to look at and after the comma, you tell it what col columns you want to look at, right? So if we wanted to look at row 3 to 6 and we wanted to look at both columns, so in this case 1 to 2 it gives us that particular data frame, that particular subset. And of course, we can actually assign that. We can call it subset. If we wanted to, we could call it anything. And voila, we've created a new little data frame or a new object called subset. And we can look at that right over there. Now, a little more about functions, right? Functions have arguments. The first argument in a function is usually what data you're going to look at, but there are other arguments, and I'm going to show you how that works right now. Let's start off by saying, let's say we don't know much about a particular function, like uh, let's say the median. We can put a question mark, and we type in the word median, and in our help menu at the bottom on the right, we're going to see all of what we call the R documentation around this. And one of the things it tells us is what are the arguments? What are the things that need to go inside the brackets in order for this function to work? Some of those arguments you need to input, right? So for example, you need to tell the function which data set or which object it needs to look at. But a lot of the, a lot of the arguments are actually just set as defaults and you don't need to do anything unless you want them to change, right? And I'm gonna show you how that worked with this particular example. In the example of median, the na.rm, which is na stands for not available or missing data and rm stands for remove, the na.rm argument is set by default to false and we can change that to true and I'm going to show you how that works okay let's do that so first I'm just going to show you how if we use the function median apply it to the object cars and the variable distance in this case it'll give us and we don't need to put in that second argument by the way remember I said na.rm the na remove argument is set by default to false you don't have to put it in r just assumes that it's false and in this case, this data has no missing values. It doesn't really matter. So if we push command enter, it just produces the median, in this case, 36. But let's quickly create an object that does have missing values in it. And I'll show you how this particular argument works and how it is that we can change the value in an argument when we apply a function to an object, right? So let's create an object called new data. It's just gonna be a single, it's just gonna be a single vector. And if you want to put multiple values into a vector, what we can do is use a little c, which stands for concatenation, and we can say 2, 4, 6, 3. I'm going to put in na for not available, so there's a missing value there, and we'll end off with 9, right? And you can have spaces between those, it doesn't really matter, right? Command enter. Now we've got a new object here called 
new data, it's numeric, and there's the values, and we can see the missing value is right there. If we apply the function median to that object, new data, because there's a missing value, R is giving us NA, it cannot calculate the median because there's a missing value inside that object. However, if we add in information with respect to that second argument, so comma, NA remove is equal to true. In other words, remove missing values. The NA remo remove feature of this function is set to, to true. It'll remove missing values and then try and calculate the mean. And now if we push command enter, voila, we get the median value. Right, I hope that was useful. Just to summarize, we've got objects, right? And objects have got different structures. We talked about the one structure, which is a data frame. That's the most common structure. And within that, there are variables. Variables have got different types, right? There's numeric, there's categorical, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to talk more about that in another video. We apply functions to those objects. Those functions are instructions, are to do to those objects, to that data. But sometimes there are additional arguments that we need to put in to give more specific instructions as to how it is that that function should be applied to that object, right? I hope you found that useful. Take care.